Welcome to Keto on the Couch with Rachel and Joe. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we are Two, two Crazy, Crazy Ketos. Ketos. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome to the more than 275 new subscribers since the last Keto on the Couch. Now here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like product reviews, we do recipe videos, we talk about various keto topics, and then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we also have a website, which is twocrazyketos.com. That's where you're gonna find all of our different recipes. Now we do upload at least five new videos every single week, so make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Yeah, so let's get this right, you know, get done on it right away. We're not on a couch. We're not on a couch. We're on our bench. And that's because we are starting our fast today and we're gonna be live streaming in just a couple of hours. Soon. So we figured it would be a lot easier to just film keto on the couch here on the bench and then not have to worry about moving all the lights and the cameras and everything else. But it should be a little bit easier moving forward from this week because starting next week, we're going to attempt to film Keto on the Couch on Saturdays. I'm so excited. That is gonna be really awesome. We'll be able to kind of free up our Sunday afternoons just a little bit. And I might look less dead, <laughs> hopefully. Okay, so let's. We have, a, we have a whole list of talking points. We're gonna try to be a little bit more professional with Keto on the Couch now. It's time. So we've got, since we have it in here, we've got behind us a whole list of talking points, but we gotta start off with today's Keto on the Couch actually has a sponsor. Awesome. And if you haven't figured it out, it is obviously Perfect Keto. Yes. We absolutely love Perfect Keto products. Um, I love their bars. This is my new favorite flavor. This is the birthday cake bar. Especially now that it's lacrosse season, I use them a lot. Like I take one because I don't want to eat anything going up to my games, like not a big heavy meal. So if I have a game in the afternoon and I haven't eaten yet, I'll have a bar like on my way to the game then I'll have my game and then I'll come home and I'll eat my normal dinner. But it's just that little something, just a little bit of fuel tides me over. You love the collagen powder. So you may notice my hair is a different color this week because I had to color my hair again. I just thought it was a new day. Be <laughs> because I had a tremendous amount yeah. of gray root growth, which is awesome because it means my hair is growing. Honestly, I did not think it was gonna work. I really didn't. I really did not think We've tried that a lot of you things. were going to start growing hair just from taking that. And I mean, it's another reason that we are trying to incorporate eating a lot more of like the animal collagens and bone broths and things like that, because every little bit helps. But this is really most of the collagen that Rachel's taking in. It's working. So I actually have some in my coffee today. I don't normally drink it in my coffee. I do like the vanilla better in my coffee. Usually I make it with just ice water as a separate beverage and have my coffee black. But I just felt like, I don't know, a little sweetness in my coffee since this is the last coffee almost before the fast. So yeah. And then my favorite thing is the MCT powders. It's like having a cream in your coffee. My favorite is salted caramel followed up by the vanilla. Yeah. So yeah, Perfect Keto is sponsoring today's video and they are having a special sale for President's Day. That's why we told you guys last week to wait. Worth the wait. It is 20% off everything on the site with the exception of, I believe, the bundles. Usually they don't allow you to use their coupons and their special discounts on the bundles but it's 20% off of the site. Uh, you can use the link down below that'll take you directly to it and automatically put the 20% discount in there. Or you can also use the code, it is PRESDAY2020. I'll put it here along the bottom of the screen. But we would really appreciate it if you use the link down below. That's how Perfect Keto knows you found them through us. And they really are a huge supporter of our channel. So we would greatly appreciate it if you kind of just go through our links so that they know, hey, they found them through two crazy ketos. Thanks guys. Yeah, so yeah, so that was the first thing we needed to talk about. And again, we we wouldn't let them sponsor our channel if we didn't really love their products. It is something that we use on a regular basis. Right. Okay, so um, what's the next thing on the agenda? Oh, so our blender bottles came in. So if you pre-ordered one, we're gonna be shipping them out on Tuesday because Monday's obviously a holiday. They're back. Now, along with that, to celebrate, because they did come in early, yeah. what we're gonna do for the fast 
If you are interested in the blender bottles or if you're interested in anything else that is on our site that we personally sell, like not the t-shirts that all goes through Amazon, but the blender bottles, our mugs, our little backpacks or anything like that, through the fast, you can use the code 2KKFAST and that'll get you 10% off everything you purchase on our site. I love it. But the discount code will go away when we end the fast on the live stream on Wednesday. So just 72 hours. Just 70. Well, it's actually going to be 73 hours because we're actually going an extra hour and a half. Remember, because I have a game on Wednesday. But I am totally assuming that everybody will have already had their first like bone broth or something and we will all be joining one another after everybody else has finished a 72 hour fast. Yeah, I'm sure you don't wait for our live stream to obviously break the fast. Go ahead and eat. We're just gonna come in and celebrate with everybody who participated, whether you do 24, 36, or 72 hours. Or if you just skip breakfast one day, or if you just cheered us on the entire time. I do wanna let you know, I may have to pause this a couple of times to go pee. Well, in preparation of our fast, we were supposed to talk about the fast in a while, but we'll talk about it now since we mentioned the blender bottles. Peeing. In preparation of the fast, I've this is my now, it is what? It is four o'clock, and this is my sixth blender bottle filled with water that's got a bunch of the keto chow fasting drops in it. I'm just literally doing squirts in it because I'm getting ready for the fast. I want to make sure my electrolytes are super high because we're about to stop eating in just Two hours, three hours. But we haven't eaten yet. No, we haven't eaten. Well, you had a keto chow. That is true. I've had two wings. We're oh. going to have a nice big OMAD as soon as okay. we're done filming this. All right. But I may have to go pee a couple of times just to kind of let you know. So uh, let's talk about the fast before we move on. We're going backwards off of our list. But so we are starting our fast tonight. For you guys, we've already started it. If you didn't start it yet or you want to start it late, go ahead and join us. Go for it. We are fasting from everything except for water. That's what we're doing. We're just saying if you can, do it that way. If you can't and you want to include coffee or soda, go ahead. It's whatever you feel comfortable with. No one is coming to your house and giving you a citation yep. for and not ketoing properly. And what we're going to do is we're going to live stream. We'll be live streaming again tonight on Monday for you guys at 7 o'clock p.m. Tuesday at 7 o'clock p.m. And then Wednesday, we will finish it up at 8.30 p.m. because I have a game, so I'm going to be home a little bit later. And if I get stuck in Miami traffic, which is definitely a possibility, I will have to walk Rachel through somehow how, how to turn the camera on and get it all set up on our own. What do so, you think? So basically, start praying now that everything just lines up perfectly. <laughs> so the whole purpose of this fast is to just have a community challenge. Mm -hmm. And um, again, if you're doing the fast with us, make sure you are taking your electrolytes. Use your Redmond Real Salt. Use your Keto Chow electrolytes. Uh, suck on, where's your your little rock over there? Always this an arm's length away. Great way to get the cravings out if you feel like eating something, something like that. Make sure you're just licking on that salt. That'll kind of take away that hand to mouth habit for you. And I have a big one. Also, what? I have a big hand to mouth. Oh, you have. <laughs> what did you think I had? I, I. I'm not even going there. But it did, as we've said before, it kicked my gum habit. Yes, it did. You don't chew gum anymore. I do not chew gum anymore. And we're talking like you think people had a cigarette addiction. Yeah, she was chewing like a couple packs a day. A couple of packs a day <laughs> of gum. But yeah, and and I just knew that they had a lot of sugar alcohols, even if you're you know eating the sugar free. Worse is they're made with xylitol, and xylitol does elevate your insulin because it is like a 13 on the glycemic index. But we're talking like a 20 year addiction. Yeah. So I really appreciate that the Redmond Salt Lick has gotten me off of that. And again, Redmond is another company that is a huge supporter of this channel. So if you do want to purchase Redmond products, you know, obviously you can get stuff in the grocery store, but if yeah. you're going to order, use the link down below. That lets them know that you found them through us because they are a big supporter of this channel. Thanks guys. So we really do appreciate that. So yeah, so again, make sure you're taking your electrolytes. If you need to drop out early, drop out early. We also may, depending on our day and how the schedule is going, uh, check in live unannounced on Facebook and YouTube. We'll just kind of see how it's going. Sometimes <laughs> both, <laughs> sometimes only one. If we're maybe out on the road, we'll pick up our phone and then we can only do it to one. Yeah. We're also going to vlog our entire 72 hour experience. It's gonna be one vlog. 
for all three days and we'll release it later on in the end of the week. And we're really hoping that maybe if you've never done any intermittent fasting before or even you know long-term fasting, that you'll give it a shot. Right. That, it, that it shows that it is a possibility and also what do you do to fill your time mm -hmm. when you have no eating? Did you get some more yarn? I did. <laughs> we didn't need any more yarn, but I got some more yarn. Okay, so now that we've talked about the fast, let's talk about our food for the week. Yeah. This was a fun week for food. First of it all, really was. we went away for Universal Studios. We talked about it on our live stream, but I know some of you guys may have not seen the live stream. We went away, and at one point, we actually did try to get a great video shot of the dragon that's in Diagon Alley breathing fire on Rachel's head. Mm. And if you have not seen the video, we stood there for 40 minutes. 40 minutes. minutes. Now, uh. I spent about three hours editing that video down to some of the funniest clips of Rachel standing there for 40 minutes with some shtick. Idiots. And, um, I just look I think, like an idiot. I think I cut it down to about 26 minutes. But if you have not seen that video, I released it on Sunday. I'm going to leave a link over Rachel's head. It is really funny, especially when you get midway through. I mean, watch the whole thing. It's kind of funny to watch the evolution of her going from one to the other to the other and watch her being like more and more frustrated. You mean my descent into insanity? Yes. yes. Take a good look at that. But it was really a lot of fun. It's like a train wreck. So... That was part of the week, and then we came home from that. We had wings, and we did a lot of food this week. So what did we have this week? We had deviled steaks eggs. one day. We had deviled eggs, and you saw that in our vlog for Valentine's Day. And the deviled eggs came out really good. Oh, yeah, they were good. Uh, we made a lot of burgers with eggs. Short ribs. homemade bacon. We had short ribs. Uh, we made a pizza. Yes. So I haven't eaten a meat in a long time. It has been a long I, time. I'm thinking though, I, I kind of want to. That was like one of the first videos that we did. And it's really, really cringy. I mean, I went back and watched it. I mean, the lighting's horrible. And I'm like, I have no idea how to talk on a camera. So I'm thinking about, because that is such an easy meal to make, recreating that video as a so easy even Rachel can do. What do you think? I, well, I, I can do it. I know I can do it because I make it all the time. I love it. It's like my go-to thing. If the kids are home, it's a Friday night, looking to make something delicious. I know everybody will like. We can top it with whatever is left over in the fridge from the week. You got a little bit of bacon. You got a couple of slices of pepperoni. We topped it with our homemade bacon ends. So we, I had done some bacon and then I had the bacon ends. So after I picked the meats, and again, it's awesome. And just threw the bacon ends on top of it. And it was incredible. But let us know down in the comment section if we should recreate that video with Rachel helping make it. Absolutely. But on that meat, what was really nice is we put the new route. So... What a deal. We went into Whole Foods this week. It started on Wednesday, so the deal goes till Tuesday. So tomorrow, if you're watching this video on Monday. Run. And they're doing 35% off all the Rouse. The regular Rouse marinara is already low in carb. Yeah. But they had two other ones. I forgot what. One of them was like that hot one, which is what I put on our pizza. Arabiata or something. And then the other one was... I don't remember what it was called now, but I, I know it was this. It was like two or three carbs per serving. And we only put a half a serving on an entire pizza. So just check the back of the label. Yeah. But yeah, go. If you're an Amazon Prime member, 35% off. We paid like $3.50 or $4 per jar for Rouse. So we stocked up on that. That Including was really awesome. Including their Alfredo sauce. Yeah. And the Alfredo sauces and everything. Anything else we ate this week? Again, we ate wings. Yeah. It was a good week. It, it was, was a, a good, good food week. It was. And it's a good thing because we're not eating anything pretty much the majority of next week. Yeah. Well, no food today. Well, we're going to have a food today. After, yeah. I'm sorry. You're getting food today. Oh, don't scare me. And then, but no food Monday, no food Tuesday, no food Wednesday. Wednesday, we will break our fast and we're going to talk about it later on in the live stream, on all the live streams. But when you do break your fast, any don't more than a 24 hour fast. a giant meal. Do not have a big meal. Yes. Absolutely don't have a giant meal. What you really want to do is break your fast with some bone broth, something very light, maybe a tablespoon of MCT oil or a tablespoon of coconut oil in there, just, just a little bit. You don't even need a tablespoon, maybe a half a tablespoon. 
obviously some salt to keep going those electrolytes up. I like to add in cayenne pepper. Cayenne pepper is going to speed up your metabolism. It'll help you. It's tasty too. But your gut is not going to be able to handle a big meal if you eat it right away. You want to eat something light, kind of get everything going, get those ketones going. Prime the pump. And then about a half hour to an hour after you have that bone broth, then you can have like a decent meal. Yeah. Go nuts. <laughs> Another food that we had this week was our yogurt. Oh yeah, we had a yogurt video. Now, if you haven't seen that, I will leave a link for it over Rachel's head. But yeah, we came out with a video on how to make a very high fat yogurt. Using a nut milk bag. Using a nut milk bag. And there have been a lot of comments about nut milk bags. Nut milk bag. <laughs> but the whole purpose of that was to come out with a yogurt that is similar to peak yogurt. But I do want to clarify a couple things. So. We made it in an Instant Pot, and there have been some people that have said like, hey, I don't have an Instant Pot. Right. There are a couple solutions. Number one, if you look at the recipe, which is linked down below, it's also on our website. If you look in the recipe direction, you'll see a thing. If, you, if your uh, Instant Pot doesn't have a yogurt button, use this. Well, you can do that even if you don't have an Instant Pot at all. What you wanna do is in a heavy pot, like maybe a Dutch oven or a cast iron pot or something, Bring the milk up to temperature. Okay. And usually what you would do is bring it up to 160 or 170 degrees because you want to kill the bacteria. But if you're using ultra pasteurized milk, you can actually skip that step. Then you want to bring it down to 110 degrees. So you need to have an instant rate thermometer. And then you're going to mix in your yogurt. Mm -hmm. As soon as you do that, cover it up, wrap it in a bunch of towels, stick it in the oven or in a cooler maybe. The whole idea is you wanna keep that as close to 110 degrees as possible for anywhere between eight to 15 hours, depending on how long you wanna let it culture. And that will give you the same results. All the Instant Pot is doing is keeping that temperature there. Now, if you don't wanna do it that way, I actually have another solution, which we may do this on a video in the future because people have asked, mm -hmm. you can use your sous vide. Oh, wow. Seriously? Yep. What you can do is you take your yogurt mixture. Okay. You're going to put it into some big mason jars, a couple of like maybe the, the, the quart mason jars. Mm -hmm. Put it in your sous vide, mix, mix everything up, put it in the sous vide, set the sous vide for 110 degrees. Again, 8 to 15 hours. Well, it makes sense. It's going to maintain the temperature. And it'll maintain the temperature. Now, you don't have, the, the cultures don't need oxygen. So you don't have to worry. You can seal it up if you want to seal it up. Okay? Nice. So you don't have to, in fact, you do want to seal it up because you don't want to get external well, bacteria in. Yeah, you don't want to. But you don't want to, what I'm saying is you don't want to put like cheesecloth or something. You oh. want to seal it up. They don't need the oxygen. Okay. And again, same thing. You don't have to bring it up to 170 degrees first if you're using ultra pasteurized milk. The whole purpose of that step is to kill any bacteria that's in the milk. But if you're using ultra pasteurized, they've already brought it up to over 200 degrees. Everything's dead. Everything's dead. Now we do have a few questions from our Facebook family group. I was going through and I saw these questions. So I pulled them out because I figured this was a good place to answer them. Awesome. But if you are not a member of our Facebook family group, make sure you go join it. It is free and there's nearly 2,000 people in there. I know. And they are awesome people. They're sharing their stories. They're inspiring one another. They're sharing recipes, deals, deals. that they found, everything like that. I mean, people put up all the different coupons they find. Now, before we get into those questions though, we got a couple of products to review and I figured we were gonna review them right here. Not a full five things review, just taste them. We've we've had these before. This is that low carb company. It's low carb keto nut granola and they have a new flavor. This is uh, with cacao. Cacao! And this is cacao almond pecan. And so I figured we could just go ahead and try it real quick because we've had their granola before. Very tasty. And I think that this is honestly, I'm gonna just pull some out, here you go. See, I'm feeding you. Um, I think this is the closest to regular granola as far as like texture or something like that. I don't know if you guys can see that, uh, but it, it's very small. It's like a granola. It'll go great on top of our yogurt. So good. That is a good flavor. It's a really good flavor. And very similar to granola too. It's not super chocolatey. I know it says cacao. Mm -hmm. It tastes more cinnamony to me. So, but good. Let's go over the ingredients on this real quick. So the ingredients in this are sliced almonds, sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, coconut chips, pecans, erythritol, 
monk fruit extract, butter, um, cacao powder, and cinnamon. Cacao. It does taste very buttery. Yeah. So that's it. That's all the ingredients. There's no fillers, no emulsifiers, or anything like that. And so it's good. 190 calories for a third of a cup, which is a lot. 17 grams of fat, 5 grams of protein, 12 total carbohydrates, 4 grams of dietary fiber, 5 grams of sugar alcohol. So that's what? Three net carbs per serving. We like it on top of our ice cream, but it also tastes really good in a salad. And our yogurt. It, it, I've been mixing granolas and lollies and stuff in the yogurt just a little bit. You don't need a lot. Maybe a, maybe a quarter to a half a serving. Just a little something. And uh, this is really good. Uh, there's a link down below. I don't remember how much it costs off the top of my head. I actually even like it in chicken salad. I know that sounds weird, but it's really good. They also sent us this. And um, again, they're a super nice company. Really nice. They just sent it to us. But this is a keto butter biscuit mix. And uh, I was looking at the ingredients on this, and I'm honestly not willing to try it. Uh, so the ingredients in this are a keto flour, which is enzyme-enriched wheat, vital wheat gluten, wheat fiber, high-protein patent wheat flour, soy fiber, canola oil, salt, dextrose, emulsifiers, enzymes, ascorbic acid, sucralose, and calcium propionate. Then there's also palm and palm kernel oil, buttermilk powder, baking powder, egg white powder, lecithin, salt, and natural flavors. So there's 10 servings in here. A serving is two, is, I'm assuming, I don't know, it doesn't say. It says two net carbs per biscuit. It says makes 10 biscuits. So a serving is one biscuit. And it's 90 calories per biscuit, six grams of fat, six grams of protein, 16 total carbohydrates, and 14 grams of dietary fiber, making it two net carbs. So here's the thing. I bought a dress once that was my size. I fit into it, but there was all kinds of nonsense going on in that dress. I It was a hot mess. It mm -hmm. was a hot mess. So it fit technically, but it was not something that I should wear out of my house. And I feel like this is what we're seeing with some of the bread options mm -hmm. that are coming to the market. It may fit in your macros, at least technically on paper, but you got to think, do I really want to move forward with this? Do I want to leave the house with this? There's some stuff that just because it fits my macros, I'm still not putting it on. I'm, right. I'm not putting it in my mouth. Yeah, so they sent it to us. Again, we really like the company. I'm not willing to even sample it. I'm not willing to eat all of that wheat. It's got a lot of wheat products in there. Plus, it's got canola oil and it's got dextrose in it. Uh, so I'll leave a link down below, but I'm personally not willing to try it. And again, Rachel's talking about the bread products. We actually did get the Aldi's bread. We've got a review of that coming out later on this week. So you can see what we thought about that. Um, but the other thing with this product personally for me is I, it's going to be a trigger for me. Yeah. I mean, again, this is one of the reasons that I do like a net carb slash total carb that even if I'm following net carbs, which we bounce kind of back and forth, I always have a total carb limit, which mm -hmm. we've talked about in a lot of videos. My total carb limit is 30 to 40, but I feel like no matter what, you should have something because if one of these biscuits is 16 carbs, total carbs, I feel like I'm going to eat two or three. At which least. It's going to max me out. And I don't care what anybody says. If you eat 100 total carbs in a day, that is going to affect you even if it turns out to be like zero net carbs. It's just going to affect you. So I feel like it's gonna be a trigger for me to have something that close to a real biscuit. There's plenty of really good keto option biscuits out there. I mean, you can get the Keto Child Chicken Soup and make the um, drop biscuits, which I think taste incredible. They taste incredible, and honestly, we don't even make those that much. No. Because of the fact that we have such a long-standing relationship with biscuits. Mm -hmm. I mean, I am a Southern woman. Oh, I used to go to Cracker Barrel. Biscuits. We would get the ba basket of biscuits, eat them all, ask another one, and ask for another one, and then on our way out the door, like our leftovers were like, can we have some more biscuits? I mean, yeah. we used to go through four or five baskets of biscuits between the family every time we went to Cracker Barrel. So once I've been removed from that, I'm not super keen on making that a part of my everyday life. Now that's for me. Right. That may not be how you feel and you certainly may not have the same triggers that we do, but when you're living that close to the edge with, with a food that you've had a struggle with before, mm -hmm. The easiest way for me to deal with it is to not deal with it. Yeah. 
So going back to our food, I did, I put a thing on our notes up there is I had a question. You have been Instagramming pretty much all of the food that we've been eating. Trying. And we were curious, is that something you guys like seeing so that you don't have to wait, you know, for like keto on the couch and see what we ate. Do you like seeing like the pictures of like what we're eating for the day, whether it be a single meal or two meals in a day or... TMI. Not bother like taking out the light box and eating cold food. Yeah. <laughs> now let us know down below if you like seeing the pictures of the Instagram. It's kind of fun and it's teaching us to be better photographers of food. We're trying because it used to look like a hot mess when we would take a picture of a food. The other question that I wanted to ask you guys is, so our Valentine's Day vlog was a little different, right? It wasn't just a full day of eating. And a lot of people have been asking us, can you do more full day of eatings? Can you do more like a day in the life of Joe and Rachel kind of thing? Sure we can. And so what we did with the Valentine's Day vlog is we kind of added into that um, some questions that we had. Like we talked about what our 10 favorite things are. And we're curious, do you guys like that style of the full day of eating where it's not just like, here's what we ate today, but each one of those vlogs has a talking point. Like you were talking about like five reasons people don't want to do keto. Right. So do you like that kind of a full day of eating vlog or do you want to just see a full day of eating with shenanigans and then when we have the five things of like what people don't want to do with keto where we're sitting down here at the desk. Yeah, like a separate video. Yeah, so let us know about that. So you want to, uh, let's get into these questions that some people had that was on our Facebook group. So Lori had written a question. She said, hey, Lori. how do I know how much fat you're supposed to have each day? I watched 2KK's Keto Chow Challenge videos and they were very specific on how many calories from fat each of them needed each day to reach a desired daily caloric goal. So if you're talking about Keto Chow and like how much fat, you kind of just... We ballpark it. We're not super specific, especially because we're now more into like, I know about what's going to fill me up and we're not trying to be like micromanagers when it comes to our calories. We're just trying to eat like most of our calories within a very short eating window, anywhere between two and like five hours. Right. But if you're looking at keto chow, if you're, let's say if you're doing three meals in the day of keto chow, and let's say your total calories that you're trying to eat for the day are 1,500. That mm -hmm. means each keto chow should be 500 calories. The average keto chow is about 115 to 125 calories for the protein powder. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to add in fat. So we usually do three to four tablespoons for Rachel. And then I'm anywhere between three and six tablespoons, depending on what my other meals are. Because a lot of times we're going to do keto chow for one meal. Like Rachel did keto chow for one meal today. Right. So that keto chow had three tablespoons of butter plus the keto chow. And I think I made you chocolate toffee. Yes, you did. So that's about 425 calories, which means she now has a little over a thousand calories left for the day. But again, we're going to eat until we're full for our other meal and not really care how many calories it is. I plan on using all 1,000 calories. So hopefully that answers your question. It just comes down to how much do you want your meal to be? I do suggest eating it with some fat. Don't do like no fat in it. Number one, it's not going to taste that good. It's going to be very watery. Yeah. And you really do want to have the fat because the fat is going to sustain you. If you just drink keto chow with like some almond milk and or some water or both, it's going to taste good, but it's not going to satiate you and you're going to end up using it more like a snack than a meal. Exactly. So you don't want to do that. Make sure you're drinking keto chow with a meal. Now, as far as just a regular keto diet. You mean eat keto chow as a meal. Yes, keto chow as a meal. Now, if you're talking about regular food, when it comes to fat, you just want to have enough fat to fill you up. You don't have to hit you know, that fat macro. If you put everything into the calculator and there's one on our website, I'll link it down below. You know, that is what you're going to use to get you through to your next meal. C consider it like a lever. It's going to help you get through. But if you have like 130 grams of fat in your macros and you only eat 100 grams, don't worry about it. That's the, just to fill you up. The other 30 are going to come off of you. Yes. 
So, you know, look at your protein, make sure you hit your protein macros. And I don't even care if you go over protein. You know, people talk about gluconeogenesis. That is going to be demand driven. It's not supply driven. So don't worry about that. And use the fat to fill you up. And fill you up means get comfortably full. Not like, hey, if I move, I'm going to vomit. Right. Even though sometimes that's comfortably full to me. And then keep your carbs under 20. That's net carbs under 20. And we usually say set a cap for yourself for total carbs as well. You'll be happy you did. And the carbs, again, that's the maximum. It's okay if you're only getting five or 10 carbs. Our average day, we're somewhere around six to seven total carbs unless I'm incorporating a bar. Right. But on our regular day, like lately, where we're doing eggs and steaks and stuff like that, we're like five or six total carbs. So it doesn't matter if like you're not hitting your carb goal. No. Okay, so the next question came from Brenda. Hey, Brenda. And Brenda said, when your body gets used to only eating the keto way of eating and not having sugar, gluten, and then if you eat something off plan, you feel yucky. So my question is, should you occasionally eat a cheat meal? Am I setting myself up for being sensitive to certain foods? And I hope this question makes sense. It totally makes sense, but my advice would be no. Do not have a cheat meal. And I would say the same thing, and I'm going to say the same thing for a couple of reasons. Number one, you don't need it. The reason you feel yucky is because your body doesn't like those foods. Your body is not going to feel yucky if you go eat in a giant bowl of broccoli. If you eat, you know, 75 carbohydrates of broccoli, your body's not going to feel yucky. Your body's going to feel yucky when you eat 75 carbs of sugar or bread or processed foods, things like that. Your body doesn't want that stuff. You're only supposed to have a teaspoon of sugar in your blood. Which your body will provide. Yeah, so there's no reason to be giving it a bunch of sugar. What you're talking about is like carb cycling. Now I'm gonna actually steal something from Kim Howerton. On her Facebook group, somebody asked a similar question about Mm -hmm. carb cycling and she had a great answer. And she put up a picture of a very skinny athletic person. Okay. And said, if you look like this, feel free to carb cycle. But if you've got some wiggly jigglies, don't bother carb cycling. Hi. I have some wiggly jigglies. There is no reason for me to carb cycle. If you like are a super athlete, like a Danny Vega, or you know, a Dr. Fit and Fabulous or something like that, yeah, you're gonna burn through those carbs. But if you're not, all you're going to do is set yourself back. Plus, what you're gonna end up doing is reminding yourself of the foods that you're not eating on a regular basis. Yeah, because in my experience, you're going to have one cheat day and then it turns into two cheat days and then yeah, now we're back. Yeah. Let's get into some subscriber of the weeks. Awesome. As well as our questions. And so the first few are kind of like subscriber of the weeks. They're like not full stories. Mm-hmm. They're non-scale victories. I love these. So the first one is from a vet. Hey, a vet. And a vet actually just put a little thing up. She said, I cleaned out my closet and these are all too big. And look at that pile oh, of clothes she's got. Oh my gosh, I love that. That is awesome. Does that make you feel good? It makes you feel awesome. And here's the thing. You've got room in your closet. It's time to fill that closet back up. Fill it back up. Go shopping. Uh, We also had one from Elizabeth. And Elizabeth Elizabeth just wrote, she's six weeks in and she has a non-scale victory. She said, my blood pressure has been high for years. And today I'm 111 over 83. The bottom number needs work, but not much. Wow. That's incredible. That is awesome. The next one is from Brianna. Hey, Brianna. And Brianna actually said, I have two non-scale victories today. One, I stopped eating my breakfast when I was comfortably full. Wow. We made keto pancakes before church. And normally I'd eat anything like this until I was uncomfortable or until they're all gone, pre-keto or keto treats. But today I honored my body by not finishing my plate because I was satisfied. That is awesome. And we don't talk about that enough because that really is... It's a hard thing. That is a break in behavior because, I mean, we were joking earlier about me. Like, yeah, in in order for me to walk away from the table, I have to almost be throwing up. So, like, that is not... That's not a good thing. So, yeah, that is an awesome victory. Yep. She also has another one. She put a picture of herself with her beautiful child up here and she said, I ran and played at the playground easily with my toddler. We had so much fun playing tag and chasing each other up and down the stairs, so much laughter. I didn't have a single worry of not being able to keep up or having to leave early because mama is tired. Even though the scale hasn't moved much, there is a big change happening. This is my why and this is why I keep going. Thank you for the support. Can I see that? 
Oh my goodness, that is beautiful. And oh my God, I'm getting emotional. That's an incredible why. Because that is an incredible why. And it's honestly something that drives me in this channel, which is I want other young mothers to experience what I didn't. And dads. Yeah, and dads, because I was having to come home early from the park and I did have you know, hassled breathing when Kayla was little and I was, you know, trying to chase him. I had a really hard time even attempting to keep up with him before keto. I think about like this past week that we went to Universal Studios and while we were there, it really did cross my mind a lot because we did Universal Studios completely fasted. As a yeah. matter of fact, by the time we ate, it was like 24 hours since we had eaten. So we walked the entire park over 10 miles and we got up at three in the morning to drive three hours to do all of this. And we were never tired. We walked the entire park. And in the past, I was number one in a wheelchair or in a motorized scooter. You were always like halfway through the park, like, hey, I need you to get out of that scooter for a little while. Let me ride in it because like my knees hurt. Exhausted. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. We would drag ourselves back to the car, barely making it to the car. And I think about how awesome it would have been if, had we found this way of eating when our kids were little. Yeah. And how much different the family, you know, vacations would have been mm -hmm. because you know, midday, really a lot of times out of nowhere, the hangriness would hit yep. because you don't have hangriness when it comes to keto because when you're not eating, your body eats you, right. which is what you want to do. So it's never in a starvation mode. There's right. always something for it to like find in the cupboards over here. But yeah, you'd be trying to enjoy your day all of a sudden the hangriness would hit and you were like, wherever we are, we have to eat right now. Doesn't matter if it was where I wanted to eat. It didn't matter like what the price was. We've got to eat right now because there's no negotiation anymore. I am an animal. I cannot control myself. We've got to stop right here. And it felt so good to be able to navigate the park like we wanted to. And we brought some food in with us. We brought in uh, a couple of perfect keto bars. Keto farms. And we brought in, each had one package of the keto farms. Rachel had the strawberry, I had the jalapeno. They're still in our backpack. We, we just, never took them out. We had them, but we never wanted them. And it wasn't like, oh, I just want to try to fast. No. Because we were busy, we were enjoying ourselves. We never had the desire to eat. And our body, like Rachel said, was eating its own fat. The only time I really get hungry is when I'm bored. And what yeah. that's telling me, is you're not really hungry, you're eating emotionally out of boredom. Right, same here, yeah. Or if something bad happens in my day, or if something really good happens in my day, and all of a sudden it's like, yay, I'm hungry. That's an emotional thing. But again, it's emotional. Okay, so the next one is actually, this is gonna be our subscriber of the week, and there was only one this week, I was shocked. Okay. Because if, again, when you're new to our channel, go join our Facebook family group, mm -hmm and leave your story. Put up some before and after pictures, put up your little story if you feel comfortable. And if you're not a member of Facebook, you can email them to stories at twocrazyketos.com because your story is going to inspire somebody. You know, when I look at these, these stories inspire me every day to keep doing what we're doing. They sometimes motivate me like, hey, I've been through that or I'm going through that right now and if they can do it, I can do it. Exactly. So make sure you're sharing your stories. So this one is from Dawn. Hey Dawn. And Dawn, uh, she sent a couple pictures. I'm gonna put them up here. And she said, hello from Bowling Green, Kentucky. I just wanted to introduce myself to you and show my keto progress so far. Well, howdy. I started keto full time in September, 2019. I've lost 60 pounds. Wow. I love this lifestyle and I love these Facebook support groups. Keto on my friends. I love reading your posts and watching your YouTube videos. So encouraging and so happy I found this oh group. Oh my goodness. It seriously looks like a different person you altogether. Look, I mean, wow. Wow. Incredible. You look absolutely gorgeous. I have to tell you, I know this episode is called Keto on the Couch for this series. I am really enjoying doing this at the bench. Yes, where we can I see Because I like it. having the computer and you can see this. That but is gorgeous. I know we call it keto on the couch, but maybe we can somehow do it with a television. Oh my goodness, I bought that same clock for my mom once from Bombay Company. Okay, you ready for some comments? Yes. 
Okay, so the first comment is from Doll. Hey, Doll. Doll wrote, LOL, at 4622, bulletproof coffee, chat, chat, chat. We've got Amazon here. Eyes sparkle and a grin. Joe, you're like a kid in Christmas. I hope you got something fun. Always. <laughs> Always. Every time it's like, I wonder what I got. <laughs> It is. It's like Christmas. It was funny when we were in Universal. And again, if you've seen the video of Rachel doing her little shtick for 40 minutes waiting for the dragon, at one point she goes, I wonder how many Amazon packages we got here. We got a bunch while we were waiting. When we came home, and of course, you know, we, we have children just like you have children. They open them all. Well, either that or... They put them just inside of the door, but no further than what's absolutely necessary. So you trip over the whole building block pile. I don't know who's worse. My children literally picking them up and putting them inside the door yeah. or Amazon who takes them and literally piles them outside of the door. And here in Florida, your doors have to swing outwards. That's part of code because of the hurricanes and stuff. So they put them right up against the door. And then when you open the door, you can't actually open the door. Close the door, go to the garage. Or you smush them. I mean, I had a, one time we got eggs delivered and they put them right there and I opened up the door and <laughs> crushed five dozen eggs. Bye bye eggs. So Mara wrote, Hey Mara. Thanks for explaining the YouTube connection. I will absolutely hit the like button more often. Thanks for all the information. Well, thank you very much. And please, again, make sure you go hit the like button on this video and make sure you're subscribed and you get notified by hitting the little bell button because all of that is what helps this channel grow. We greatly appreciate it. I like this being here. I like this because you can read some of the comments. Can I read the next one? Go ahead. This one is from Facebook. So Mike wrote, Hey Mike. After watching the yogurt video and reading this, suddenly the two avocado logos make more sense. It says, what does the word avocado translate to? Avocado actually comes from a word meaning testicle. <laughs> when the Aztecs discovered the avocado in 500 BC, they named it... I can't even say that word, which translates to testicle. It is likely that the texture, shape, and size of the fruit, as well as the way it grows in pears, inspired the name of the avocado. Nice. I will never eat another avocado without seeing a testicle, ever. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. So Christopher wrote. Hey, Christopher. My kids haven't been allowed to have sugar at all this month. They're ages six, three, and one. Tonight, since we're about halfway through the month, I broke them off small little pieces of Lily's Milk chocolate bar. My six-year-old was excited until I told him it didn't have sugar. <laughs> he tried it anyway, and he loved it. The, also two also, the other two also loved it. Well done, Christopher. I wish more parents would just try this. Just, just try it. This is so awesome. And yeah, then when they try like something like Lily's, it really is a treat, Yeah. right? But maybe next time, don't tell them. Yeah, that's the only thing I would say. Maybe don't tell them. It's kind of like, don't ever tell Rachel when I've added beef, liver, and heart, and kidney into her ground beef. If I tell her, she won't eat it. But if I don't tell her, she loves it. Yeah, if you don't, if you tell me, then I feel like I taste it. I do want to applaud you, though. I mean, we talk about it all the time. Like, when it comes to the kids... There's no reason that we're giving our kids all of this sugar, you know, whether they want it or not. Even if you're only not giving it to them at home and they're still getting it maybe at school or something, if you somehow limit it, you know, like maybe you can't control them when they're not in the house, but when they are in the house, let's try to cut stuff back and improve their health a little bit. Jody wrote. Hey, Jody. Well, I guess we all know that Joe is a leg man now. Wink, <laughs> wink. I saw sous vide all these a while back and I thought it seemed uh, like too much work. I wish I had gotten it. I like steak medium rare and I like my eggs over medium. I used to love liver when my mom made it when I was a kid. And now that I've seen it and handled it raw for my dog's food, I don't think I could ever eat it. Maybe if I had found a great recipe. I haven't even finished the video, but I wanted to pause at the comment. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Judy wrote. Hey, Judy. Ugh, the coffee subject kills me. I tried cloud coffee and while I love it, I cannot drink it black. I tried it and I just can't do it. Prior to keto, I was drinking coffee with half coffee and half French vanilla international delight creamer. So I switched to bulletproof coffee. I'm trying everything. I'm now dropping how much heavy whipping cream I'm using and upping my butter. I did just order the perfect keto base in collagen. I hope it helps me cut the creamer. Any thoughts? And Rachel, I love your earrings. Where did you get them? Oh my goodness. Well, most of my earrings are from someplace cheap. <laughs> so like look in the clearance section of your local Walmart or Target and you'll probably find some there. For the coffee, I'll answer it since I don't drink my coffee black and Rachel does. Um, 
try the Kaitu Super Creamer. Mm-hmm. That is a great substitute if you're used to like those creamers, like, you know, the, the International Delight ones and stuff like that. And three tablespoons, which I feel is a generous, generous serving, is zero carbs. I always count it as one and only 50 calories. I think that's a good place to start. Uh, the Perfect Keto MCT Powder makes a great creamer. You personally don't like the collagen as I, a creamer. I don't like the collagen as a creamer so much, and the base is going to taste a little funny too, It's going to be very salty because what the base is, is it's exogenous ketones, and they're bound to electrolytes. So, I mean... I've had it in coffee. Other than the coffee flavor, I don't like the base in coffee. It's kind of like adding salt to your coffee. Yeah, but the MCT powder, that does taste yeah. like a MCT creamer. powder, use the Kaitu Super Creamer and butter. Yeah, and butter. So Carmen wrote, Hey Carmen. Dumb question. Can you marinate and then sous vide? I'm a medium rare, but I will tolerate a medium at restaurants. I'm aware what cooks can do to send back food if they have a bad day. No thanks. Um, the leg thing though, Joe, that almost sounded risque. Oh my gosh. Thanks for rooting with me and the lovely compliments. Well, thank you. Well, Rachel does have good legs. That's first of all. So to talk about the marinating in a sous vide, yes, you can absolutely marinate your food. And that's what a lot of times we do. I will season it. If I'm doing steak, sometimes I'll put some sprigs of rosemary in there. You can marinate it in like whatever kind of teriyaki, like keto teriyaki Mm -hmm. or whatever you want, some garlic vacuum seal it that actually helps some of the flavors get in there and then sometimes we'll freeze them and then stick them in the sous vide at a later date but when you're sous vide yeah all of that stuff can be in there you know like from the very beginning i feel like i'm still red (laughs) so debbie wrote hey debbie i'm a subscriber hope to see you at ketapalooza coming from california hate to fly pray for my fear to be less than my god absolutely god is bigger than your fear absolutely we are still trying to get to keto palooza i mean we want to go we're just trying to make sure we can take that weekend off because we're already taking off a weekend in april we're actually taking an entire week off in april and then we're taking more than a week off in june right so but we're trying we're really trying to go i know we really want to go we want to go hang out with autumn so Pat wrote, Hey Pat. The sweet tooth is a struggle for me. Rachel, do you feel like keto chow triggers your desire for sweets? No, I don't know if it's because it is a beverage. I don't have as a hard of a time saying no to sweet beverages as I do eating food. So sweet foods like uh like a you know, like a Danish type thing, mm-hmm. muffins, cookies, that sort of thing, some of the bars. Right. I have a harder time with those than I do with a drink. Okay. Lisa wrote, Hey, Lisa. Hey, Rachel. I just want to applaud you for acknowledging where you stand with the treats and being true to yourself. Now, that's an example that I can get behind. I appreciate your choice for self-care over YouTube expectations for product reviews. I'm sure I'm not the only one. The products are convenient and even fun, but sometimes it's just necessary to see that we need to get back to the basics that gave us the success in the first place. Thank you. I really appreciate that you understand because I don't I don't I don't want to have this weakness. Mm-hmm. I really don't. I, I want to come out and tell you that I've got this and I've got my stuff together and like, hey, follow me because I got my stuff together. I don't have my stuff together. And being able to be vulnerable with you guys is really a precious gift that you're giving to me. So thank you for just backing me on this. And there's gonna be lots of product reviews. There's plenty of stuff that that I can eat, but when I get in the danger zone, I feel like I'm going to be no help to anybody if I go down my own rabbit hole. Yeah, one of the things we've talked about is the way we're going to do reviews is, number one, the kids are going to join us a little bit, and it's going to be me and them. And then a lot of the reviews are going to be, we're going to take one or two days, and we're going to bang out a whole bunch of reviews in just like a short period, like an hour and a half, and say like, hey, this is a day where... We're going to eat a couple hundred calories and a few carbs of like, because we're only taking a bite. We're not eating like a whole right. bar normally, but we're just going to say like, today's going to be the day that I'm just going to kind of blow the day, have a bunch of it now, but then know that I don't have to do anything. So sometimes you're going to see the videos like Rachel may have the same hairstyle for six videos, even though it's like three weeks apart. Right. But it just makes it easier where we don't have to worry about triggering us every single day. Just like today's the day. And then we're done with it for a couple of weeks. I got to put a fence around it. Yeah. 
So Yvette wrote, Hey Yvette. I struggle with sweets too and I'm working on only having dessert once or twice a week. Rachel, you look pretty in pink. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for all you do for us. Yes, it's nice seeing your family in the videos. I don't like runny eggs and I like my steak medium well. Well, thank you very much. Well, first of all, for the compliments. That's like really, really sweet. And thanks for not minding seeing our kids in these videos. Definitely making the sweets a once or twice a, a, a week thing really made the difference for us. Yeah, like, when we switched to having dessert only once a week. Like Friday. It was a game changer. And then when we kind of got away from that, that's where we started spiraling downhill. Like, hey, you know, today's a special day. Hey, it was a hard day at church. Hey, whatever, you know, it right. was just, and it became like everything was a reason to have a dessert instead of, you know, saying like, hey, one day a week, you're going to get a dessert and the rest of the week, you're going to be good. I have an entire law firm inside of my brain <laughs> pleading the case for why I need to have bad behavior and why I need to eat all of the desserts and all of the, the keto bread and all of those things that are available to me. I can make a defense for anything. So Stephanie wrote. Hey, Stephanie. Love how open you both are about your triggers. I struggle too on cravings when I have keto sweets, so I've had to back off on making them. Eggs, I love eggs. I honestly like them any way they are cooked. When I scramble them, they're a wet scramble. I love that the boys are going to be getting into your videos. Seeing both of you couple videos have been awesome in giving other couples support, but having the boys in them, that is good for giving support for the whole family to watch and see how everyone supports each other as a family. Awesome, well thank you. Minix family wrote. Hey Minix family. Yes, it hit me when you talked about having a bite of Anthony's food. I primarily stay home with my toddler and I catch myself frequently waiting to eat a bite from whatever he's eating or when I'm cutting up his food. It really can add up if I were to eat all of those little bites. Let me tell you how bad I was. When Caleb was little, they absolutely had the Easy Mac that came out in like self, like single servings. I purposely did not make that, even though there was absolutely no way that my two-year-old could eat an entire box of you know shells and cheese. I made an entire box of macaroni and cheese every single time that I fed him macaroni and cheese. Why? Because I knew he was going to take three bites of it and I could eat the rest of the box. That's the honest truth. It is so, so hard. Why don't you read the next one? So Gail wrote, Hey Gail. Yes, it would be great to see your sons and even Rachel's mom and brother. Don't like runny egg yolks. I have never had one, but the look just grosses me out. I just recently started doing fried eggs. My norm would be scrambled or omelets. Right now I am obsessed with fried over almost hard. Yes, that's my jam. <laughs> I like my beef, still some pink. I never am sure if this is medium or medium rare. Still still a little pink is usually like a medium. So yeah, Rachel likes her eggs like overcooked. I like them over medium, like a jiggly yolk, but not, not too undercooked, unless we're having a burger. The one thing about yolks, I mean, and this is one of the, I'm trying to get Rachel into, she loves hollandaise sauce. Well, what is hollandaise sauce? It's melted butter and raw egg yolks. That's all it is. Yeah, but you're just giving me raw egg yolk. Well, you can use it as a cream. I'm trying to work you into eating Ruder de Tudor. There's some butter in that. Make it hollandaise sauce and then we'll talk. <laughs> So Tara wrote, Hey Tara. I love the collab with Anthony. Like my steaks rare, and I'm with Rachel on the eggs though. I'll pass on runny ones. I want it just right. He says overcooked, but it's just right. <laughs> Dina wrote, Hey Dina. Steaks medium to mid rare, eggs over easy, whites completely done with the yolks runny. Wow. You had me until the last one. <laughs> I definitely do not like undercooked whites. That is one thing I like. I like the yolks a little runny, but definitely not the whites. I, I see people sometimes where the whites are kind of like the, I don't know, kind of looks like snot to me. I'm trying to get y'all to go rooter to tutor. <laughs> so September rose. Hey, September. Medium, medium rare steak over hard and then cooked a little longer eggs. Would love to see more of the kids. Thank you. You guys are not helping me out trying to convince her to eat the yolks a little bit runny. No, they're making my case. Delissa wrote, Hey Delissa. I've never had prime rib. I'm definitely going to have one of those as soon as I can. My favorite way to eat eggs is soft scrambled with onion, mushroom, and cream cheese. Ooh, I bet that's good. That sounds delicious. Keto Cindy keeping it real over 50. Hey Cindy. Medium, for sure. Love runny yolks, but not runny whites. Yeah, runny whites. 
Slap a stick wrote. Hey, slap stick. Meat, medium to medium rare. Eggs, runny yolks in fried eggs is my favorite. If scrambled, I want it cooked all the way through. Wow. I am definitely that way. So my preference is like, I don't even, I should do, I shouldn't say they're not really over medium because we don't flip them. A lot of people don't don't know that. So if you get them and you only cook them on one side and put a dome and let them cook, that's actually sunny side up. When you flip them, even if it's for a second, that's over easy, over medium, over hard, where both sides have been on the oh. griddle. So we generally don't flip them. We leave them one way up and then I put a dome or a plate or a bowl over the top and allow the heat and the steam to cook the top. Flip the egg. Well, you flip the tube. I don't flip yours either. I do the hard with you on the top, but I just have to keep the dome over it longer for you. Flip the tube. But when it comes to scrambled eggs, yeah, those things I don't like kind of like soft scramble, like the kind of runny scramble. It's got to be fully cooked. So Joe wrote, Hey Joe. Rare steaks, medium rare burgers, and runny eggs. See, now we're getting into the good people. They're cooking rare steaks, medium rare burgers, that's how we do it, and then runny eggs. Maybe it's just a Joe thing. Leanna wrote, Hey Leanna. Bring on the family, even your gray. My bird knows your intro and perks up whenever she hears it. How awesome. In one of your videos, she could hear your bird in the background. She got so excited to hear another gray and she still remembers that. She's so dang smart. They are. They are really smart. Too smart for my good, <laughs> let alone their good. Too smart for my good. So TC's life wrote. Hey TC. Definitely more Anthony. I would like to see an interview of what it's been like watching you two do keto and if that has influenced his eating choices. Also his views on what health looks like to him. I love that. I think those are some great questions and we actually saw this the other day. Mm -hmm. And so we did go to them. We mentioned it the other day on our live stream and we're going to have them both on our live stream. This week we're going to have Anthony on. I think it's cool to see their perspective because it definitely had to have been weird for when all of a sudden we went from potato chips, tortilla chips, lots of junk food, fast food to we don't do any of that. But honestly, I haven't even asked them a whole lot of like, hey, what were your thoughts when we made this change? Yeah, exactly. Now that probably will be on Thursday's live stream, which is at 9.30 Eastern Standard Time. But we'll put a little reminder in our Facebook group letting you guys know exactly which episode he's gonna be in. Mm -hmm. So Joe's friend wrote, Hey Joe. Yes to the boys joining in and agree with the other comments that the pets are always welcome to. <laughs> no runny eggs here. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes, Joe's friend. They have to be completely cooked through, but I do like my steak medium rare. Oh my gosh. We're on the same page. Thanks for another enjoyable video and prayers for Gail. Oh. So last one. Rachel wrote, Hey Rachel. Congrats on growing your number of subby friends. I love my steak medium rare. I've never tried a sous vide style, but I'd love to. Keto has been going well for me. I don't know how many pounds I've lost because I don't even own a scale and I don't want one. But I've lost four dress sizes since January 1st and I've never felt better. Thanks to you both for your constant support and your encouragement. Rachel, four dress four sizes. Four dress sizes. Who the heck cares what the scale says? I don't need to talk to that joker. Four dress sizes? Oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> Seriously. That is brilliant. Let us measure our success with our clothing and not with our scale. We will be happier for it, I guarantee you. So I think that is a great place to end this week's Keto on the Couch. Again, make sure you're joining us on our live streams this week. We're live streaming Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, and Thursday night. Monday and Tuesday are at seven o'clock. Wednesday is at 8.30. Thursday is at 9.30, all of them Eastern Standard Time. There'll be reminders on both our Facebook and our YouTube channel, and you'll be able to catch them on both Facebook and on YouTube. Yeah. So please do a favor, hit that like button down below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon, and that way every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. Until next week. Bye. bye.